This lesson is on the signs and symptoms of trichomoniasis. Before we talk about those signs and symptoms, let's talk about what trichomoniasis is and some of the ways individuals get infected with it. So trichomoniasis is a sexually transmitted infection. It's an STI, and more specifically, it's an infection with the parasitic protozoa trichomonas vaginalis. So what happens is we have this protozoa, so it's a single-celled organism. There's going to be many of them, though, when you get infected. And they're going to colonize different parts of the reproductive tract. So they can affect the vulva, vagina, and the cervix, and other parts of the female reproductive tract. And also, they can reside and colonize certain parts of the male reproductive tract, including the prostate gland. Now, trichomoniasis is actually one of the most common STIs. It is actually the most common non-viral STI. So we have other viral STIs like HPV that would be more common, but this is going to be the most common non-viral STI. And the risk factors for getting trichomoniasis include high-risk sexual activities. And this is actually a relatively common condition that affects up to 3% of the general population. Now, males and females are going to be affected differently with trichomoniasis. With males, most patients are going to be asymptomatic, meaning they have no symptoms at all. There are going to be some symptoms that can occur in some males, although this is going to be more rare than it is in females. And with regards to in females, about 50% of them are going to be asymptomatic. So there's going to be 50% that have symptoms. So we'll talk about mostly signs and symptoms that occur in females, and then some of the signs and symptoms that can occur in males later. So what are some of the signs and symptoms that can occur in females? One of them is going to be vaginal discharge. So vaginal discharge is actually going to be one of the most common findings of trichomoniasis. The discharge can be a variety of different colors. We can see green or yellow. We may see a bit of gray coloration in some cases. There may be a bit of blood in it because this organism, as it colonizes the female reproductive tract, can cause some irritation and damage to the tissue. So there can be a bit of blood, there can be some pus or can be purulent, and it is often going to be described as thin and frothy. Another finding we can see is vaginal odor. So along with this vaginal discharge, we can have vaginal odor. So it's gonna be a bad smelling discharge that's often described as a sort of musty smell. And in some cases it may smell fishy. So these are some of the more common findings of this particular condition in those who do have signs and symptoms. We can also see vulval vaginal irritation. So it's going to be irritation of the vulva and vagina. It's often going to be described as a burning sensation. And the vulva and vagina can become erythematous, meaning that they can become reddened in appearance. Now this is due to the trichomonas species irritating vaginal mucosa. So it does irritate the tissues as I mentioned before. This can cause burning sensation and some other symptoms we'll talk about here in a moment. Vulval vaginal pruritus is also another particular finding. So pruritus means an itching sensation. So the vulva and vagina can become itchy. So along with burning sensation, there can be an itching sensation as well. This is again due to irritation by organisms. We can also see another finding called dyspareunia. Dyspareunia is going to be pain during sexual intercourse. This is again due to inflammation and irritation of the vaginal mucosa. We can also see postcoital bleeding occurring as well. So postcoital bleeding means bleeding after sexual intercourse. And again, it's due to these organisms causing inflammation and irritation and damage to the tissues. So the vaginal mucosa is often going to be affected here and we can get a bit of bleeding. And this can also be due to the cervix being affected. So the cervix can often become quite inflamed and reddened, and we can also see some issues from that too. Now, we can also see other findings, including lower urinary tract symptoms. So we can get urinary frequency, so an increase in requirement to go to use the washroom, so patients feel like they need to urinate more frequently, and dysuria, burning sensation when urinating. Now, this is often going to occur in females, but males can also have these particular findings as well. And because of these particular findings, in some cases, if they don't have some of those other symptoms we talked about before, they only have these lower urinary tract symptoms, then it can appear like a UTI. And we can also see cloudy urine in some patients. So the urine becomes more opaque, and this is going to be due to mucus and in some cases pus that discharges into the urine. So that can also occur as well. 
Other findings include pelvic pain. So pain in the pelvis, we can see a lower abdominal pain as well. So along with a lot of those symptoms you just talked about, there can be some lower abdominal pain that can occur in some patients. And then in more rare cases, but in some cases that can occur in males, we can get prostatitis. Now prostatitis is an inflammation of the prostate gland. And again, this is going to be more rare. We did talk about the fact that trichomonas vaginalis can colonize the prostate gland of males, but a lot of times there's no symptoms, but we can see in some cases prostate inflammation. Now we can get either acute or chronic prostatitis. So acute, we could get other signs and symptoms, fatigue, fever. So there can be more systemic symptoms if it's acute, but most of the time it's going to be chronic prostatitis. So there's going to be issues with sexual functioning or pain during ejaculation, those types of findings we can see with chronic prostatitis. Now, with regards to males, males can have other findings. We talked about the fact that most of the time they're going to be asymptomatic. We just talked about the fact that they could have prostatitis in some cases, and they can also have other symptoms in other cases as well, including epididymitis, an inflammation of the epididymis, so they can get scrotal pain. Along with this, they could get testicular pain as well, so these are going to have some similar findings. And then in other cases, they can have penal discharge. So they can have discharge from the urethra of the penis. So they can have some of these other findings, but again, they're going to be more rare. Most of the time, sinus and symptoms are going to occur in female patients. The problem with trichomoniasis is that along with those signs and symptoms, which often occur more acutely, there can be long-term complications of a trichomoniasis infection. Some of these include infertility. So there can be scarring of some of the female reproductive tract that can occur and that can lead to or increase the risk of infertility, pregnancy issues. So even if a patient does get pregnant, there may be some issues with the pregnancy. There can also be cervical neoplasia. So cervical neoplasia means that there's going to be new growth on the cervix. We talked about the fact that trichomonas vaginalis can affect the cervix. It can cause what we call strawberry cervix, and this can ultimately lead to a increased risk of cervical neoplasia in the future. We can also see post-operative issues, increased risk of STIs like HIV infection, so especially in patients who have high-risk sexual activities, because trichomonas is going to lead to damage to some of the tissues in the female reproductive tract. Those tissues are going to be less of a barrier to other pathogens. So patients are going to be at a higher risk for other types of STIs. And then finally, patients who have had a trichomoniasis infection, especially those that are not treated, are at a higher risk of having pelvic inflammatory disease. So a lot of these are going to be especially particular complications that can occur in the case where patients are not treated quickly enough or if they haven't been treated at all. So these are going to be important complications to look out for, especially in those who haven't been treated or who have had the infection in the past. Please check out my full lesson on trichomoniasis if you want more information on how it's diagnosed and treated. Please also consider joining as a member for members only content. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you again soon.